Hello YouTube, I'm David with the David West channel. Well today I want to build another hobo stove out of a number 10 green bean can. We just had some rain this morning and it has stopped temporarily. It's supposed to start back with 100% chance of rain in about an hour or so. Maybe we'll be able to go ahead and knock this out. But I really am going to get to the hobo stove build, but I have distractions. Let's see if we can fire up this uh, bacon grease lamp and just let it burn during the build. Now it's wet. You know there's 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 grease all up in that wick, so it should light right up and burn right on. Let me dry off the table and we'll get started. All right, let's talk about tools and materials. First, you're gonna use a number 10 bean can, which holds just over three, just over three quarts. And doesn't everybody have a spare container of bolts and nuts and nails and just miscellaneous that you've gathered over the years? So many times through the years, this has come in handy. And once again, this morning has come in handy for the sheet metal screws that's gonna hold the elevated floor, gonna support it. I mean, you can go out and buy some sheet metal screws if you want to. If you buy them, go ahead and buy a big thick one like this, but it's kind of unnecessary. This morning, I'll be using six of these. And I am not using expanded metal on this. As far as an expanded metal covering over the feed hole, we're still gonna have a feed hole, but I'm just gonna pierce three quarter inch holes through the side of the can. And like I've already mentioned, this lid top, top to the can, we're gonna turn that into our elevated floor and it's gonna be perforated. And for legs, I've got half inch bolts by inch and a half. And all right, now the tools. When we go ahead and perforate that elevated floor, you'll need a backer board because you're gonna drill a whole bunch of quarter inch holes through it. And then we're gonna need some painter's tape, half round file, hammer, channel locks, tin snips, ratchet. Uh, I like to use this eight inch ratchet extension, three eighths drive. And it's gonna take a three quarter inch socket for those leg bolts screwdriver, sharpie, quarter inch, eighth inch, sixteenth inch, drill bits, step bit, center punch, tape measure. So let's go ahead and get started. We got rain coming and we'll go as far as we can go. If I have to blow this grease lamp out and just cover it up with a tarp, we'll wait till the, till the rain passes by. All right, for the legs, I like to just eyeball the centers of them. So we're gonna make a mark up here on this ridge. Come down here on this ridge, make another mark. Turn it 90 degrees. Make a mark on that ridge and this ridge. Then we'll take and center punch them. You can imagine with this ridge right here, this is a high spot. You can imagine trying to drill that without a center punch. So we'll go ahead and combination center punch it and dent it so we can get a drill down through there. We'll go ahead and do a 3 16 pilot hole. step bit this is a quarter inch by three quarter step bit and I have the quarter inch part of it worn out that's why I have to drill pilot holes for everything and I already have a mark on it for 
half inch. Let me darken it up. Tighten them up and back hold with the channel locks. Now you want to go through here and square up all the legs. You want to square them this way, but splay them, splay them out this way. This one is already splayed out and it's square. That's square. This one's leaning over. And this one's leaning just a little bit. Do not worry if there's just the least little bit of wobble in this. There's no wobble in this right now, but you gotta remember as you're heating this up and the metal is expanding and contracting, just that alone is going to cause things to wobble more at some times rather than others. So let's go ahead and start laying out our center lines. All right, and the center line is for the bottom row of three quarter inch vent holes. And then one ridge up from there the center line for the screws that support the elevated floor, and then the center line for these uh, upper vent holes. So the upper vent holes, we're just gonna center on that first ridge. You see the corrugations here? Let's go up two grooves and put a center line right there. And then the center line for the screws that support the elevator floor is the next groove up. seam as the center line of the back. So this is the center line. Let's go ahead and drill the holes in this vent area because that's where I messed up last time. When I promised you a stove that had no expanded metal in it, I so messed up drilling my holes in the vent area that I had to go ahead and put some expanded metal a cover over it. This time we're not gonna do that, so let's just take extra precaution and get it right. Let's put a three quarter inch hole in all four corners first, then we'll look at it again. Now we know that we want one in the center of those two. All right, 
three more holes right in the center. And there's our venting. Don't necessarily need a feed hole opening like I always have in them because it's easy enough just feed stuff down through the top. But you definitely need this vent because whichever the way the wind is blowing, you'll definitely want to turn this towards the wind so that it'll blow on your fire and increase it. Good. Now let's lay out all our other holes and go ahead and make all of our vent holes. And it needs to be about that long. Doesn't matter that the table's a little bit wet. We don't need it to stick to the can too much anyways. Every inch and a half, we're gonna put a three quarter inch hole. Some people accuse me of over venting. They say you don't need that many holes at the bottom, you don't need the holes at all at the top. Well, they're wrong. You see how high that I stack the wood in my stoves? And if you've noticed, there's a lot of ash that builds up in the bottom. The bottom, many times, the way I use the stove, gets choked off. You absolutely do need, do need those vent holes in the top of the stove. You may not ever, you know, put too much wood in your stove like I do. But then you'd like to have that option in case you needed to one time. I overstack the stove many times, like especially when I'm trying to burn wood down, turn it into ashes so I can put it in my ashes bottle. All right, we'll use the same piece of tape to mark the top holes. Now, for our six sheet metal screws, it'll take an eighth inch pilot bit for that. Let's go ahead and lay that out on the tape also. We got 19 and a half inches. We need to divide it by six. That's going to be three, what, three and an eighth? Let's put a mark at three and an eighth. Six and a quarter, nine and three eighths, 12 and a half, Now, <clears throat> we can't interfere with the three quarter inch holes that are gonna be drilled so closely to it. So I'll have to cheat this one way or the other. <clears throat> but it'll still offer the kind of support I'm looking for. And I'm good to put one there. See, now this one has to be cheated left or right. I'm gonna cheat this one left. And cheat this one left. All 
Uh, we'll start off with the sheet metal screws, the eighth inch pilot holes. Go ahead and put those screws in first. You do not want to strip those out. And you're really gonna have to be careful if you use a drill to run in these sheet metal screws. Six screws for the elevated floor support. Let's go ahead and keep working on the elevated floor. I'm gonna cut an eighth inch off of here, so of course it's gonna be a total of a quarter inch. So if this elevated floor is all the way over to one side, you'll see a quarter inch hole right here. If you don't like that much space, you can cut it to a closer tolerance than that. This is just a little bit wider than a sixteenth. Go ahead and lay out our uh, eight pieces of pie and start riddling it with holes. I'll tell you the pattern that I use when I start drilling quarter inch holes in it. And this is something that you could just eyeball this also. I'm just going to drill three quarter inch holes, like from the center in the middle and then on, on the end. And then on the next uh, side of the pie, I'll offset the holes. So now what I want to do is come in here and put three quarter inch holes right here. I think I'll go for strength instead of three quarter, I'll, I'll go with that half inch. And you can come up with your own hole pattern. Pretty much quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, half inch. And if you'll notice that pattern repeats a row of quarter inch, a row of quarter inch, half. A row of quarter inch, a row of quarter inch, half. So. Now all we need are some three quarter inch vent holes. We'll be ready to try it out.
Well, we made it. Got a little bit of sprinkling rain. Let me get my tools up. We'll go ahead and burn it off. Let's not forget our drain hole right here. Which is easy to forget. Raindrop must have hit it just right. Got some tulip poplar bark, some tulip poplar, and a lot of lolly pine needles. to make a little hole in the middle of my tender. To catch all those sparks. Well, I wouldn't exactly say we beat the rain, but we built that stove in spite of the rain. Stick around to the end of the video. I want to show you how I use those green beans. All right, y'all. Appreciate you joining me on this one. We'll catch you on the next one.
videoing right now. Hold on. Hello YouTube, I'm David with the David West Channel. Let's go ahead and build another hobo stove. All down through the years I've been calling these one gallon cans, but indeed these are number 10 cans. They're about six and three sixteenths across and about seven inches high. And they hold just a little bit over three quarts. So this is a three, three quart pan. And I'm thinking we'll be able to make everything work out. Uh, usually I have a manual can opener Throughout the most of my life, I've had a manual, but I can't find one today. So you can go ahead and use an electric. You've just got to support all the weight and help it as it's trying to turn the can. Now we're going to cut an eighth inch off of that lid, drop it down, and use this as the elevated floor. A little bit of olive oil. And a couple of bouillon cubes. That provides the salt. And we should have just enough leftover onion right here to do the job. Do you all eat leftovers? We do. Thanks for joining me on this one. We'll catch you on the next one.